gait pattern. Um, this can be used with patients who are full weight bearing or nearly full weight bearing. Since the weakness or pain is bilateral, it doesn't matter which extremity leads. Um, the two point means that there will always be, always be two points of contact with the floor at all times. So to start, the patient will have their crutches about six inches away from the feet and they will start by moving one foot and one crutch backwards simultaneously. They will then move the remaining foot and crutch backwards in one step until they are back at midpoint. Before moving backwards, make sure that you're standing up straight, keeping your crutches pinched there. Good. Shoulders down and back. And you will be moving your right crutch and your left foot back one step at the same time. Go ahead and try that. Good. Now bring your right foot and left crutch back together one step at the same time. Good. Next, I'll be demonstrating four-point backwards gait. This, like the two-point backwards gait, can be used when the patient is full weight bearing or near full weight bearing. Each lower extremity and assistive device will be moving independently of one another. Also, like the two-point gait, the weakness, pain, imbalance, or instability is bilateral, so it does not matter which extremity leads. All right, Sarah, to move backwards, you are going to start by moving your right crutch backwards one step. Good. Now move your left foot backwards one step. Now your left crutch back one. Now bring this foot back to the middle. Good job. Now keep going that way. Crutch foot, crutch foot, crutch foot, crutch foot. Next is three one point pattern for backwards gait. This is appropriate for when the patient is non weight bearing or partial weight bearing on one extremity. It is important to ensure that the patient has adequate balance and coordination because weight will be applied through the assistive devices instead of both limbs. They will start by taking one step backwards with the uninvolved lower extremity. The crutches will remain in line with the injured extremity. They will then bring the crutches and injured extremity back to midline to meet the other extremity. Okay, Sarah, I'm gonna have you take one step backwards with your good leg while you keep your crutches even with your hurt foot. So, yep, yeah. now bring your crutch and foot back together in one step. Good. Next is three one point pattern for sideways movement. This pattern is useful for when a patient is non weight bearing or partial weight bearing on one lower extremity. The patient will start by moving the crutch in the direction that they want to go. They will then glide the strong extremity in that direction and then bring the remaining crutch back to midpoint. It is important to make sure that the patient is gliding on the strong foot and not hopping. To move sideways, you're going to move your right crutch one step to the right Good, now glide through with your left foot. Now bring your left crutch back over to meet your feet. Good. Next is the two point pattern for sideways gait. So for this pattern, first Sarah, you will start by shifting your, if you wanna to move to the right, you'll start by shifting your weight to your left crutch and moving your right crutch and your right foot about six to eight inches to the right. Now you'll shift your weight back over to your right crutch and bring your left foot and left crutch back to midline. Now repeat this movement just like that. Next is the four point pattern for sideways gait. During this movement, the weight will always be on the stable crutch and limb. So to start, you'll to move to the right, you'll first move your right crutch about 60 inches to the right. You will then step with your your same side lower extremity to the right. Now bring your left foot back to midpoint and follow it with your left crutch. Now move crutch, foot, left foot, and then crutch.